The other day, when I realized I couldn't unlock Divine Conversion because it requires The World Wakes, I just left Hell's Workshop and I was like, nah, I hate this place. What I think does not require World Wakes is making the blueprints for Ancient Invention. Why do I have almost 600 fragments? <laughs> so that I can learn to make the XP capacity. Okay, not the XP cap Okay, not the ancient tool. The ancient gizmos. All right, no, 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 seriously. <laughs> one second. I, we, can, we, can, we can do the other ones too, goddammit. I made a potion for that. Here we go, ancient tools. Yes, acquire the blueprint. Fudge, yeah! XP capacitor, acquire the blueprint. Fudge, yeah! Okay, how do we make an ancient weapon gizmo shell? I need historics and classics. Okay, you know what? You know what, game? You know what? You know what? You. <laughs> I guess we're not doing ancient invention. What's up, gamers? I'm Coach, and this is my Hardcore Iron Man. The end goal of this account is to try and survive to the front page of the Hardcore Iron Man achievement high scores. Making things more interesting, these high scores are bugged. Dead hardcores are given a random rune score, so if we ever lose our hardcore status, we lose our place on the high scores. To make it to the front page, we're going to have to take on nearly every achievement in the game, including some absolutely insane combat achievements. So, to get the hardcore ready to take on anything and everything, our first priority on the account will be completing all the quests, mini quests, and area tasks in the game. This should give us access to everything we need to take on the real challenges later, and will encourage me to get a solid base of skills along the way. Previously, we got to beating the heck out of Krill for some subjugation armor for both our magic setup, and so we could make some necromancy gear when the skill released. Completed the Seer's Elite Diaries to unlock our upgraded enhanced Excalibur, and knocked out 99 defense along the way. In today's episode, I want to get at least one more Combat 99, pick up a few more drops from Krill, and take on some notoriously dangerous quests. It is time. Let's go! Thank you! Don't mind if I do! Hey! More Zammy comps! What is that? <gasps> There's an hourly Zammy spear! <laughs> Why did I say that? Why did I make it an hourly Zammy spear? Who did I do this now though? How many is that? Three? I'm just stacking spears at this point. You know what? I don't even want anything else from this boss. So I'm just gonna see how many ste spears I can stack up. It's a freaking upgrade on the spot. Let's just put these straight on, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, feels good, bro. Feels good. This has been a good hour. I think it almost makes up. Almost makes up for our, our dry hour before. Almost. I need probably, like, two more drops. We can call it even. Hey, what is that? Hey, we just got an effigy. Bro, let's go. Two booties, one hour. Oh boy. Yeah, I don't think I don't think anyone cares. That was like, oh yeah, coach got another drop. Standard. We we we, we you, you know we come here for we come here on the hopes that. Ah, and got some shot too. Let's go, bro. Let's go. Let's go. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm actually not sorry. Ah, she's got another got some shot too. Minion. <laughs> what a way to end the hour, man. Taking a wee look see at the log. What do I got? 284 kills total now. Just a few more things. We still need a, the ward, the gloves, the helm. But I think, honestly, for 284 kills, I think our log's looking pretty, pretty bloody all right. All right, so I couldn't make any ancient gizmos before because, well, I didn't have the historic and classic components. So a simple solution for that was to go to the level five dig site and carry it. Collect up a few of the lowest level artifacts. Then we're just going to restore these really quickly. Disassembling these little buggers gives us a decent number of historic and classic comps. Let's see if we can't get ourselves a couple of perks. 
Now, our number one most important perk, I think, to get first is actually going to be the highest tier scavenging we can. If I scav three, okay, I'll need at least three of those, preferably four or more. And upgrade all of those to scavenging three so we get more components when we're in combat. That is pretty nice. Our next port of call is to upgrade all of our precise to at least precise five. Lovely, that's a bit of an upgrade to all of our weapons. Now our next perk that we're going to roll for, I've only got enough comps to roll for this twice, but we're going to see what happens when we put in eight vintage comps. We're either going to get Crackling or Relentless, both of which are epic perks. So I'm just going to take what we get. Crackling four, that's very juicy. Two lots of Crackling four. So I'm just going to put a Crackling four on each of my magic tops here. Actually, I'm going to do one more set of rolls. I'm going to try and improve my honed. Honed five. Now, that's really nice. Honed five again. That's also very nice. And honed uh, anything with furnace is just trash as an iron man. I'm going to use these honed fives on my hatchet and my mattock, I think. Those are the ones that I'm probably going to use the most in the near future. So we will just get them upgraded a little bit as well. Okay. Here's a good one from Ports today. If we can succeed this voyage, we will have a tree shaking scrimshaw recipe completed. 94% chance to come home. I think that's pretty good. I think that's pretty good. Rage, I still need to get 90 fletching so I can actually fletch scrimshaws. But hey, we're working on that. We're making broad arrows by, before our wildy events now. So that will that'll happen when it happens. Can't go past a bit of Jack of Trades XP. You cannot go past a bit of Jack of Trades XP. It is too good. Here we go. Another XP book. And we just got level 89 prayer. Heck yeah. I think it is time to start knocking out some for a minute quests, right? Horror from the Deep will give us some god books that I can use when I don't feel like juicing the wind book. Probably not going to use them very much uh, at all. But it is kind of required for a whole bunch of other stuff, including but not limited to Recipe for Disaster, which I've already started. So, uh, you know, it all plays into the master plan. Dream Mentor will unlock a bunch of extra lunar spells for me, including ones that let you spin flax and just some other handy skilling stuff. I think Glorious Memories is nothing too special, but it is required for Blood Runs Deep, which has some ridiculously huge XP rewards. There's going to be a bit of a detour because it requires some Achievement Diary goodness as well. But fortunately, Achievement Diaries are on our to-do list, so that's not a problem. And so it was time to get questing once more. Horror from the Deep had us aiding Larissa in the lighthouse north of the Barbarian Outpost in search of her lost boyfriend, Jarsik. We discovered that he'd encountered the Dagonoth beneath the lighthouse and was in grave danger. He's listening to the voices in his head about Dagonoth. Uh-oh. Yup, good one, mate. We dispatched the Dagonoth mother and rescued him, returning the lighthouse to relative safety for the time being. <laughs> oh my gosh! That was a spooky boss fight. That's horror from the deep completed. That was not as tough of a quest as I was thinking it was going to be. Next on the list was the Fremenic Isles, which was trying to bring peace to the long warring Fremenic Isles of Ja, ja it is so, and nay, nah, it's not. It took some underhanded spy tactics. Madness Jester Dude is uh, very undercover. Classic coach juggling, which you can catch on the live stream, link below, and leading the charge against an invading troll army to slay the troll king. But in the end, we managed to bring peace. There we go, that is Fremenic Isles completed, and we've got ourselves a helm of Nasnot, and uh, access to the contraband yak produce shop on Jatazo. Does that mean, wait, I think that means I can buy my yak hide every day now. Then it was on to Dream Mentor, rescuing a wounded adventurer by the name of Cyrusus from beneath Lunar Isle, and entering the Dream Realm once more to help him overcome his fears and become a formidable warrior. There we go, that is Dream Mentor done, eight new Lunar Spells unlocked. Glorious memories followed this. We were once again tasked with making peace between various Fremenic parties after a massive falling out when adventuring went wrong years ago. These guys really don't get on well, eh? Before long, though, we had the Fremenic chieftains drinking together once more. Lovely! Glorious memories completed, and we just have Blood Runs Deep to do to finish up the Fremenic quest line. Before I can complete Blood Runs Deep, we need to do the easy, medium, and hard Fremenic achievements. 
So I conveniently knocked out all but four of the easy for manic tasks just running around living our best life. Knocking out these last four should only take a moment. Completing the remaining Fremantic Easies was, as you might expect, easy. And we were rewarded with the first tier of Fremantic Sea Boots. These provide some small buffs when recharging the Enchanted Lyre. We also got a 5k EXP lamp, which we chucked into prayer. The medium achievements were a little bit more involved, but still very cruisy. Before long, we had our next boot upgrade, granting improved approval rating gain on Miscellanea for managing our kingdom, and a 10k EXP lamp, which also went into prayer. And now it's time for the hard achievements. Luckily, I had most of the items I needed to complete the hard tasks banked already, so blitzing through these took no time at all. There we go! That's all the hard Fremmy tasks done, and we just need to talk to Advisor Grim on Miscellanea to get our reward. Completion of the hard tasks awards the Fremantic Sea Boots 3, which provides additional teleports to the Enchanted Lyre, and the ability to swap to Lunar Spells at the Kadan Grimoire in Preftinus, along with a 15k XP lamp, which, predictably, we put into prayer. Quick detour for Infernal Star, and Fletching Broads while we wait gets us 87 Fletching. Back to questing. The grand finale of the Fremantic questline is Blood Runs Deep, a truly epic end to the Fremantic questline. It turned out that our encounter with the Dagonoth Mother under the lighthouse in horror from the deep did little more than to enrage her. She's now raising an army to attack the Fremantic people and must be stopped before she can take over all of Gelenor. Fulfilling an old prophecy, we rallied the now allied Fremenix to lead an assault on Waterbirth, taking the fight straight to the source of the problem. Heavy losses were suffered, but we came out victorious. There we go! Blood runs deep completed! We have completely finished our Fremenic quest series. Let's talk to Bruns now. There is some juicy, juicy XP from this prayer! 150k! Thank you, sir! But wait! There's more! Be careful, prayer. Another 150,000 prayer XP! But wait! There's more! I feel like uh, an infomercial right now. Huge! That was an achievement and... Holy moly! Level 90 prayer! Bro! Oh, that unlocks the missionary for ports. Absolutely massive. And we can get a demon horn necklace now as well from Dungeoneering. That's kind of nice. To celebrate completing the Fremantic quest line, I decided a couple hours of Croesus would be fun. And we even got a cheeky fishing level along the way. Anybody see that coming? Oh, we just hit 2,500 total. I did not see that one coming. As per usual, the supplies were beautiful. Even if we didn't get any uniques. Let's go check our voyages, shall we? Because I don't know if you guys remember, it wasn't that long ago. It was only a minute ago. Well, I mean, IRL, it was like six hours, but... We sent off the, the voyage for our final tree-shaking scrimshaw scroll. There we go. Look at that. Tree-shaking scrimshaw. Now I just need 90 fletching so that I can actually make the freaking things. What a lovely turn of events. We got Reaper's Choice. I do love it when that happens. We're going to choose Krill because I still need a little bit more subjugation gear for my magic setup. And also, we need sub for when Necromancy comes out soon. Let's send an hour and see if we get anything. Hey, we just got another God's Jar too. Lol. There we go. We've killed 300 Krill now. Nice. Goodness, we just got our first hood of subjugation. Let's go. Oh, stonks. Let's put that straight on. Instant upgrades. Love to see it. No, sure. We just got some gloves of subjugation as well. That's another instant upgrade, bro. Oh, no, that wasn't too bad of an hour at Krell. Picked up a subjugation hood and some subjugation gloves there, which uh, they cute little upgrades. I don't mind if I do. Definitely feeling a bit spooned. Having a full set of subjugation and just under 350k, so that's uh, not going to complain about that. Not going to complain about that at all. Well, 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 we got ourselves another Krill Reaper. It's almost like this game really wants me to gear up proper for necromancy, hey? Is that a foreshadowing? Oh, and that is our 160th Reaper task done. 888 Reaper points. Man, that feels juicy. <gasps> no shot! God Sword Shard 3 weight. Is that my. Oh no, I've already got one of those. Oh, shitting gal. That was a lag spike. 
Huh. Let's try that again. We just got 97 constitution. Hey, there's our hourly Zammy spear. No shot. Well, we just got another gown of subjugation. Oh my lordy, another gown. Bro, what the hell? Well, I think that's actually the end of the Krill Hour there. We had one spooky little lag spike where we decided to tally out, but we managed to push past the 400 KC mark up to 409 there. And we got another two gowns of subjugation taking us up to four total. A another Zamorakian spear also taking us up to four total. And uh, another Godsword Shard 3, so I got a dupe of that. So, you know, that's a thing, I guess. <laughs> We're cutting this pretty close. No XP waste, boys! <laughs> There's level 88 Fletching in the bag while we wait for KBD. So here's an interesting one. A game has invited me along for some consistent yak card runs. So basically, we just open a door and we find a potion recipe on the floor here. And that unlocks one of the Mylia potion recipes. This is my last page, I think. So if we view recipes here, all of the pages are gone and we can now just unlock the recipes. I'm going to unlock the perfect plus potion right here, right now. I'm going to drop 1 million gold on this. Perfect plus potion acts as all perfect juju potions combined into one and each sip lasts for four hours. So this is great for training agility on the Heffin course, increased chance of finding dungeoneering journals. Makes opening doors in Dungeoneering easier. 5% increased success rate for fishing. 5% chance for double progress when smithing. 5% additional herbal XP when making combination potions. 5% increase to prayer XP on gilded altars, chaos temple. 5% chance of receiving double logs when wood cutting. Just so much, so much good stuff. I'm also going to drop a bit of GP here to unlock supreme overload potions. Supreme Overload Salves, Elder Overload Potions, and Elder Overload Salves. All in all, I think it might be a while before I actually get to making these, just because I need to find a decent source of fell stalks and also more crystals. <clears throat> but hey, we'll get there, we'll get there, we'll get there. I wouldn't normally record the star because we stack our bags, but this just got us level 98 mining. So I don't know if that's going to turn out to be our next 99 or what. So with all the Reaper tasks and Krill killing in this episode, I started to run a little bit low on overloads and the main bottleneck for me now is Torstols. So I decided the best option was to use my Crystal Keys and Prif, as the chest there has a pretty decent chance to give Torstol seeds so I can grow a few more. Along the way, I managed to pick up a nice wee surprise. There's also some... Oh, <gasps> no shot! <laughs> yes, I was going too fast! I didn't even see it! Yo, we got a piece of Dragonstone armor! Dooch! I mean, you know, it's kind of cute. Dragonstone Greaves may not be particularly useful armor, but I will one day need a full set for an achievement, and rolling on the Dragonstone armor table is about 1 in 6,800. So, uh, that's pretty lucky indeed. Oh, looks like Jack of Trades is pulling through today and getting us level 91 prayer. Heck yeah, just one more level until we can use Soul Split. Okay, so another thing I really wanted to get done on the hardcore before Necromancy releases was to push out more Combat 99 so I could focus in when the skill releases. So, back to ED3 Trashies yet again to work on some strength training. Hey, oh, that's our first strength level. 88! I didn't even remember what strength level I was. Oh my goodness. No way, we just got the strength bit. <laughs> oh, that's, that's the Jack of Blades title as well. Oh my gosh, what the hell? There we go, level 89 strength. Target cycle gain, target cycle cleave, target cycle gain, target cycle cleave, meteor! There is 90 in the strength skill, level 91 strength, let's go! There is a 92 strength coming in, I love to see it. Halfway to 99, halfway there. We're making some progress. Oh, level 98 constitution, dude, strength might not be our next 99. 93 strength in the bag. I'm gonna go up! 94 strength, heck yeah! 
The levels are cranking in. 95 strength. We're getting there slowly but surely, gamers. Not even that slowly, really. Oh, oh, look at those life points. We just got level 96 strength. Let's go. Yo, bro. I might have to buy the cape. We just got 99 constitution. Dude. Can I buy a skill cape of constitution from you? Oh, you love it. Ooh, level 97 strength. Well, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. 98 strength in the bag. One level to go. And we're finally done with this whole. That's uh, 99 strength, uh, second 99 for the day. So, you know, feels good, man. Feels good. A bet and do 99s in a sesh, eh? That's all right. That's all right. May I buy a skill cape of strength, please? Yes. No, it's. I think I have the money right here with me, actually. It's fine. Yeah, thank you. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Let's do the emote. I was worried Sloan was going to stand in front of me for a moment there. I was like, oh, no. Gonna wreck the shot. Ah, oh, yeah, you get out of here, mate. My heart is in my throat right now. This is, uh, I'm actually terrified. There's a wilderness medium achievement that requires you to make an anchovy pizza from scratch in the bandit camp. And, uh, the bandit camp is full of really high level mobs that will just rip you to pieces if you are not sculled. So I'm carrying a demonic skull to skull up. Hopefully I don't get PK doing this. I'm, I'm doing it right here, right now at the most random time off stream. No one's expecting it. So hopefully we don't lose our first life. All right, let's go. I'm gonna save my movement abilities and be ready for a very quick tally if I see another white dot on the mini map. I think Frog PKing in RS3 is dead. Now there's two achievements here. One for making the pizza from scratch and giving it to Fat Tony. All right, there's one achievement and I also have to trade with this fella. And then I need to get the fluff out of here, man. Oh my God. Oh, I didn't like that. I didn't like that. No, I didn't like that, but it's done. Next on the list, I wanted to finish up recipe for disaster. And if you don't remember, and fair if you don't, it was back in episode four, I think. The Lumbridge cook was tasked with organizing a banquet for the secret council of Gelinor when the Culinaromancer attacked. Turns out it's because the Lumbie cook is a doddering idiot who made a magical dish that summons him. <laughs> what do you know? Gypsy arrows froze everyone in time and we need to rescue the council by creating their favorite dishes. First up, we free the mountain dwarf by bribing one of the dwarves under the White Wolf Mountain to make us a rock cake. Not a simple enough task. Let's give it to him. Hey, there we go. Ladies and gentlemen, we have made a special rock cake. And we've freed the Mountain Dwarf from the Culinaromancer's spell. Then it was the Goblin Generals, which proved a little trickier as these two never seem to agree on anything and what they like to eat is no different. With a little experimentation, uh, we got there in the end and the Goblin Generals were freed. Goblins, eh? They're like the weirdest stuff. I never thought that soggy bread mixed with spicy maggots and blue orange slices would be a thing, but it was. Okay, next up to rescue. Scratch unglug wee. Some jubbly chompy is apparently his favorite food. Hunting a jubbly chompy was no feat, but the coach is always up to the task. And we had our ogre friend free in no time flat. Hey, there we go. That is the ogre free. And now we just have four more council members to rescue. Pirate Pete was next up, requiring us to go diving for the ingredients to make some crab cakes. That freed Pirate Pete, lovely. And then it was time to free Ceramic Vase, who, being the poncy nonce is, needed a magical cinnamon creme brulee flambéed by a dragon fairy. In theory, if we give the brulee supreme to Ceramic Vase now, you should free him from the curse. And then we just have two more council members to go. The next of whom was the Lumbridge Sage, requiring the Cake of Guidance, made by enchanting the ingredients by completing magical quizzes or, or something like that. Who's on the range? <gasps> Why is it a stupid? Wait, hang on a moment. Hang on just a damn minute. What I want to know is how did a question mark shaped cake come out of a circle cake tin? Just gonna pretend that that is normal. All right, that's him free. 
And we have 317 quest points now. The last of the Council of Three was King Awoji, who wanted a stuffed snake. Nice. With all the Council members free, it's time to take on the Culinaromancer! Oh boy! I remember this boss fight being harder. One more quest point. We have full access to the Culinaromancer's chest, and there's recipe for disaster. Completed. Checking these dragons here. Takes us to level 98 in the farming skill. Oh, and more little skilling games here. Handing in our dailies gets us level 89 crafting. So now I can make flasks without having to boost there. I just got my first ever Commander Zillana Reaper on the account. I think I'm going to send that right now. I've just finished getting kill count. I'm going to send a full hour because getting kill counts annoying and if I'm going to do that then I might as well stick it. We're just going to cut through see if we get any drops and if not and I'll see you at the end of a sad hour. No way what the f- No it's not even that big but what the hell? Already? Five kills in. Ten kills in. Let's go. No shot. We just got a hiss of Saradam in as well. We are popping off. Oh my goodness. There's our first piece of Saradam and War Priest. That is 25 kills on Commander Zilliana right there. Nice. Hey, War Priest boots. And there is our 50th Commander Zilliana kill. Oh, that, look, that feels real good. Not bad for our first hour. No. Sh oh, we just got a Sarah Dobbins Whisper as well. Oh, I love this boss. No shot. Sure. I just got a Godsword Shard 2 off one of the minions. That, I, is that number five or something? Dude. Oh my god, I just got another offhand armadillo crossbow. Oh, what is this? And an effigy! What the hell is this kill? Oh, holy, what the hell? Another drop, bro! Come the f what the hell? <laughs> Jesus. So, uh, that hour we got two Ceratomans has one whisper. We got another Godsword Shard 2, two offhand armadillo crossbows, a War Priest of. S <laughs> I can't even. A War Priest of Saratoman Gauntlets, War Priest Boots, and uh, Zilliana's Notes, which I think just come with the first unique drop of the hour. And that was all in just 62 kills. I figured while I'm off not doing quests for a moment. We might as well do some other stuff. And I think now it's probably about time I upgraded my simple generator because I've got all the components. We're past, well past level 80 invention. I don't know why I've left this so long. There we go. Let's see if we can charge this thing up a bit more. Beautiful. I'm also able to upgrade my auto disassembler to an auto disassembler mark too. So it should disassemble stuff a little bit quicker for me. And I can also make an automatic high tanner. So I'm going to Chuck that in this little build spot here so that I can get my dragon hides that I've been getting from all my reaper tasks and stuff tanning and I don't have to do it manually at a tanner. That actually feels pretty good. Oh, we like that. We love some upgrades. I have been cooking away in that fort and uh, here's Nighty Cooking coming in. And we've just unlocked the port's adventure of the chef. That's going to be pretty good. And the ability to make primal pulp. With a good stash of duplicate subjugation items from Krill in the Bank ready to roll for the release of Necromancy, there was one last questline I wanted to get done in this episode. The Marek Quests. These quests have some massive XP rewards, but some of the later quests also have some rather dangerous fights. The first quest on the list was All Fired Up. Not technically a Marek quest, but it is required to complete the series. This was pretty easy, we just had to get a couple of warning beacons up and running around Varrock's borders. The beacon network seems to be working as expected. Now pay me. 20k. Man, we should honestly, honestly we should just let them invade Varrock at this point. This guy pays terribly for a king. 
With the beacon network set up to protect Varok, it was finally time to head to Mauritania and poke the hornet's nest in the branches of Darkmire. Here we were tasked with infiltrating Darkmire in the hopes of removing Vanstrom claws and significantly weakening the Viewatch forces that have been subjugating the people of Berderot. Before we could infiltrate Darkmire, we were intercepted by Vanescula Draken, who offered to help us in our quest in exchange for assisting her overthrowing her brother Lord Lawerniel Draken, the tyrant of a vampire ruling all of Mauritania. She told us of the Blisterwood Tree, the wood of which was capable of dealing serious damage to vampires, and offered to assist with accessing it. Against our better judgement, we accepted Vanescula's help, posing as an insider to gain enough favour with the Viawatch to be allowed access to the Arboretum where the legendary Blisterwood tree was guarded. Once we finally had access to the tree, we cut a few branches so we could fashion some Blisterwood weapons, and it was time to take the fight to Vanstrom Claws. Dispatching Vanstrom wasn't too much concern, but he had one last trick up his sleeve to end the fight. Okay, I'm at full health. Vanescula showed up at the last to rescue us, and we reported the good news back to the Marek. <laughs> and that is, uh, Branches of Darkmire completed. 20,000 agility, 50,000 woodcutting, 20k farming, 40k fletching, 20k crafting, 25k slayer, 35k magic, ability to make blister wood weapons, and more, and the Draken's Medallion for easy tellies, and his very juicy tome, which is going to give us 150,000 prayer XP. As it turns out, killing one of Lord Draken's most loyal servants kind of pissed him off. And the Lord of Vampirium quest begins with Vanescula Draken warning the Marek that he's awakened from his slumber in Vampirium and will be returning for his revenge. She hopes to ally with the Marek once again to defeat him for once and for all, promising a much gentler rule over Mauritania if she's allowed to take power from her brother. So we smuggled a small team of the most elite Marek fighters into Darkmire to set a trap for Lord Draken upon his return. We ascend the Draken's tower, posing as Vanescula's servant, ready to spring a trap when he emerged. Unfortunately, we were discovered before we could spring said trap, and everyone involved was captured. Security in the prison, however, was not exactly what I would call tight, and we were able to escape ourselves and begin fighting our way to the top. Once reaching the top of the tower, we were confronted by Lord Draken, and a grueling fight ensued. In the end, we came out victorious and slew the evil vampire. Vanescula then, predictably, betrayed us. Biting Saffalange as you could use his Icene blood to allow it to cross the River Salve and invade Mistelin. We rushed back to Varrock to warn King Rold of the impending danger. Basically, you're gonna get invaded, and we're all gonna die. That wraps up the Lord of Vampirium, and as usual, we've just made everything even worse than it was before. That's okay, though. We've still got a bit to go, though. There's one last quest in this series. Maybe we go sort out Vanescula next in the River of Blood. But first, I have an XP tome to read. Which is going to take us to level 92 prayer. Which means that we can use Soul Split as soon as we complete the temple at Centerston. We'll have to get that done soon, won't we? Oh, but we're getting it done very soon. It's all part of the plan all part of the plan and the plan is going to require some serious summoning so xp's going into summoning they're taking us up to level 78. oh and combat level 135 yo i can make giant ints for my farming runs now to start lord of vampirium we spoke to king rold who asked us to assist in arming some of the varic guard he would be dispatching to guard the river south and speak to ivan about finding a way to strengthen the magical barrier that prevents vampires from crossing the river into misthalan we had barely finished that when we received word that Vanescula was amassing her army at the crossing of the river. We had to fight off a massive creature known as a word. As we defeated it, at Farate, Saffalan's Icene mother appeared and dispersed Vanescula's army for the time being. She asked us to meet her at the Icene graveyard, where she told us that the word was Saffalan turned into a vire, and how we could use the word's blood to create a cure for vampirism, and that this would be the key to us winning the war. She also told us how to reforge Draken's Sunspear, creating an even more powerful vampire slaying weapon than our measly blisterwood equipment. We broke into Darkmire to take on the word once more, and collect some of its blood to create a vampire cure that could be used to bless the salve. Just in time too, as it seemed, as Vanescula had reamassed her army and was ready to invade. Vanescula tried summoning the word, but the vampire cure we used to bless the south turned him back into the Saffalan we knew. Seeing she could no longer invade Miss Lillen, Vanescula relented, agreeing to a truce, and once again, there was peace. 
And so we brought the good tidings back to Rold. River of Blood completed. The fully upgraded Sun Spear acquired. Three more quest points. Huge stacks of XP. Oh man, this is so good. We'll be able to use this. Oh, sheesh. That got us level 90 fletching as well, which means we can make scrimshaws. And the Sun Spear means we can unlock further prayer training by just killing vires which we are going to be getting into in our next youtube episode so we can push up our prayer a little bit higher no actually we're not we're going to be prepping to optimize it because to get the most out of it you need to complete the mauritania elites and that is a mission that we're going to undertake in our next episode i want to chuck all of this exp into summoning here because the Mauritania elites require 87. So we're going to have to do some work. But for now, that takes us up to level 79, which is pretty big. I think it is time to go get our quest die. I, I totally forgot to record rolling my quest die like a Muppet. But it was two and a half mil. And we got a cat staff, which is a free fortunate. And that's the Marek quest series all wrapped up. Ready? for the big plan of episode 16, where we're gonna gun for the Mauritania elite tasks and fully upgrading our Sun Spear to optimize training at Vyas for our prayer. So maybe we can push to level 95 down the track for the big DPS prayers. But before I get onto that in the next episode, I'm gonna have to do City of Centiston. So not City of Centiston, the temple at Centiston. That's gonna be a fun mish. That's going to be a fun mission indeed. Hey, thanks for watching, everybody. And apologies, it's taking so long to get these episodes out. Editing these take a lot more work than I'd initially anticipated, and life's been pretty hectic recently. But don't worry, there is plenty more to come, and I kid you not, a full 15 more episodes I uh, already recorded, and I've been getting better at scripting them in advance and trimming the clips down as I go, so I'm hoping one day we may even have a somewhat regular upload schedule. Until then, though, if you need your fix of coach content, pop it and say hi over on Twitch, which is my main platform for content creation. Just beware spoilers. Oh, and uh, if you like the video, there's a button for it. And if you want to see more of the YouTube stuff when it finally comes out, remember to subscribe. Bye.